Well, good morning. morning. It's good to have you guys here this morning. Glad to be here to worship with you all this morning. Um, So as we get started this morning, um, we're going to sing a song this morning. And, uh, you know, as as we kind of move into um, some new things this morning, um, you know, it's really our hope um, that we can kind of move us into doing some new stuff, but also holding on to some of the, uh, you know, traditions of this church, the traditions of the church in general, um, and kind of merge those two things together. And so um, this morning we hope to do some songs that you guys are familiar with. Um, We may be doing some new ones as well. Um, But I just want to remind us that, you know, God just wants our our hearts um, this morning. Um, As we worship him, um, he just wants our hearts and um, us just to be genuine and authentic um, with him and our faith. And so God uh, doesn't necessarily care if we know the songs or we know the words or the melodies, um, but he just wants our hearts this morning. And so as we worship this morning, um, just remind yourself of that this morning. Um, Just to press in this morning and uh, be in a place where we can just uh, grow closer to Jesus this morning. Uh, Let's go ahead and pray, and then uh, we're going to sing a song this morning. You can feel free to stand if you want, um, but just feel free to sit too if you'd like to, and just to meditate um, this morning as we uh, begin our service. Father, we just thank you for this morning, God. Uh, We thank you, Lord, that you have brought us here um, to worship you in spirit and truth, Father. Um, As you told uh, the woman at the well, God, Um, that there will become a time uh, where we will all worship together in spirit and in truth, God. And we can find that spirit and that truth um, wherever, God, um, in whatever songs that honor you, Jesus. And so, God, we just pray this morning that you would be with us. We just lift you up this morning, God. We lift up your name above every name. And we just praise you this morning, God. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.
God's people said, Amen. Amen. Welcome this morning. Thank you for being here. It's good to see everybody. Welcome to the First Christian Church. We're glad you can all be here this morning to worship and praise God this morning. And now is the time for our joys and concerns. So I'd open it up to joys and concerns. Does anybody have anything that's been special in their lives this week that that they want to bring forward? Yes, Matt. Thank you. I was I was gonna give her a chance. I was giving you the chance. But Matt beat us both to it. <laughs> so 12, 12 years. Twelve years. Happy anniversary. Point of no return. Yeah, I know it. Yep, we're committed now. <laughs> it's a beautiful morning outside. I think we ought to be thankful for the beautiful weather that we're having this morning. What else? Yes? I think we owe a big thank you to some industrious elders who have been working on breaks and meetings out in the parking lot. Looks really, it's going to look great. Well, I'll return the favor, Matt. That was Matt's, uh, a lot of Matt's doing there, and he's done a great job out there, and we've really got something special in that space now, and it looks so much better as, as you come to church. So, Matt, thank you for all your hard work on that. I have a praise and a joy. Yeah. Grace started kindergarten this past week, and we're doing it from home. So both of us, all of us, made it through kindergarten this week. Yeah. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> <laughs> There's some truth to that. Yes, Joe. Thank you. We'll keep Phil Slidell's family in our prayers. I, I said thank you. We'll keep them in our prayers, yeah. Anybody else? Yes, Dale. Good to see Donna here this morning. Yes, welcome back, Donna. Yes, Stalin. I have a friend, a former co-worker from Feral Gas, and I Facebook and I'm completely telling her she has been diagnosed with breast cancer. Sharon. Sharon? Okay. Definitely. Dr. Reggie Swanika is back to speak this morning, and we're always glad to have him here. Thank you for being here. Yes, Wayne? Oh, my name is Dr. Reggie. Oh, okay. Careful, it'll get in my head. We have a wedding coming up in the family. We had a wedding shower yesterday for Stacy and Brandon, and that was a joy to together with friends and family to celebrate that upcoming event. And we got to ride a fire truck. That's always fun. <laughs> okay. Very good. Anything else before we go to the Lord in prayer this morning? Let us pray then. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you this morning so thankful and so so happy to be here and what an amazing day you've made for us and and we thank you for this day and for your amazing work and we can see your work at play here in our lives lord we thank you for each and every individual that's here this morning 
and that we can be your body of believers to do your work and to, to worship in your house and praise your name, God. Lord, we come to you with so many backgrounds and stories and different things going on in our lives and we know that you're there for each and every one of us every step of the way and every minute of the day. And we lift our joys and concerns to you. We are so thankful for, for your healing power and for helping Donna and, and uh, giving her a speedy recovery to be back with us this morning. We're thankful for friends and family and, and for the opportunity to gather together to celebrate events in our lives like anniversaries and birthdays and weddings and all those special moments in life that you give us. We're just so grateful that you give us the opportunity to celebrate those things. Lord, we thank you for all the hard work that people are doing and that you give us the strength and the energy to carry out those works, to help make this community a better place, to help make this, this church and this building a better place. We just thank you for those talents and for those individuals that were able to do those things. Lord, we pray for our teachers, we pray for parents and students as we're still adjusting to to new things and to changes in the way things we we used to do and, and routines. And we just pray for patience. We pray that you watch over us and that you guide us during these times to help us along the way. We pray for the family of Phyllis Lytle and, and Lord we know that Phyllis is with you and and that she was one of your true and faithful servants and we just pray for her family as they mourn the loss of her but also celebrate her life and Lord we we just pray that you continue to guide us that we are listen, that listening to you that we're open to your word and to whatever you would have in store for us and that we would follow your will thank you for all these things that you give us Thank you for your Son, most of all, Jesus Christ, and the greatest gift that was ever given. And we remember Him and we remember you as we re remember the prayer He taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Children's sermon. Do we need to grab the children? Yeah, we're missing some kiddos. Here's Jed and Cole. Do you want to come sit with me up here? Would that be okay? Where's um, if you're thing one? Where's thing two? Oh, we're missing thing two. Mm-hmm. So you're usually thing two? Okay. Oh, I know. <laughs> you, you boys don't get into any trouble when thing one and thing two show up, do you? If I re no, no, it does not happen that way, right? Sometimes. Sometimes. Oh, now the truth comes out. <laughs> There's Aiden. Hi, Aiden. Hi, Gracie. Hi, lovey. There's Elliot. Hi, Elliot. Oh. Hi, Ellery. Hi, Emma. Come on up. Let's spend some time together. Mom is welcome. Okay, so I just have a quick question for you all today. What's one thing lately that you've done or gotten to do or that's happened to you that has been exciting? Raise your hand if you have something that you've done or that's happened that's been exciting. Elliot, what was exciting? 
Um. Yeah. What was it? <laughs> oh, it's so hard to remember when you're on the spot. Were you dancing? Was that exciting? I don't know if you all know Elliot's got some moves. I saw him myself. Yeah, mm -hmm. saw <laughs> <laughs> Has anything else happened this week that's been exciting? Oh, Emma, what was it? A couple of weeks ago, we went to Worlds of Fun. Oh, gee, that'd be super exciting. What was the most exciting? Um, the Mamba. Okay. For sure. Ellery, what was your exciting thing? I got to ride the spinning dragon for the first time at Worlds of Fun. Ooh, girl, how was it? It was fun. Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay. What was yours, Colt? I stayed the night at my grandma's. Oh, yeah, grandma sleepovers are the best. Uh huh, for sure. Well, I'll tell you what. Did you all know that God loves to talk to us about? anything. God loves to talk to us about all kinds of things, about the things that we're needing help with or people we want to pray for. And God loves talking to us about things that we feel excited about too. So we just want to remember this morning that God loves talking to us about all kinds of things and we can talk to God about anything, right? So tell God about the things you're excited about and about the things that you need help with or the people you want to pray for. And God will want to talk to you about all of it. Okay? All right, let's say a quick prayer together. Dear God, thank you that you love us so much and that you want to be with us and want to talk to us about anything that we want to talk about um, every day, every moment um, that happens. We love you, God. Amen. All right. So if you all want to go back, you can sit with your moms or dads or there's some things we can do back in children's church. Oh, Elliot, you called me out. He, I, he said candy, and I did not bring the candy with me. We usually do have candy. Ugh. You got me, buddy. You got me. Well. Oh. Hey, Gracie, back, please. In just a minute, we're going to stand, if you're able to um, worship with us. The first song we're going to do is called Break Every Chain. And then it, the chorus is, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Who believes there's power in the name of Jesus this morning? Oh, man, I do. And I just want to read um, out of Acts 12 this morning. It says, the night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and two guards to guard at the entrance. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up. Quick, get up, he said. And the chains fell off Peter's wrists. Now I love this because I think about this is the same Peter who was freaking out on the boat um, when he went out with Jesus and the wind and the waves were crashing into the boat and Jesus came out on the water and he asked Peter to get out of the boat. And Peter got out of the boat and what happened? He began to sink. But then Jesus, he showed him his faithfulness in that moment. And I love how in this moment where Peter is in jail and he's in chains, it says Peter was sleeping. Now we think about what a difference that was between freaking out and sleeping. It's because he was learning God's faithfulness and he was learning the power of Jesus in his walk with him. Um, and this morning as we sing the Break Every Chain, I want you to think about the chains that you might be feeling in your life. And not all chains are visible. Some of our chains are our, our loneliness and depression or anxiety or guilt or shame or addiction and the list can go on and on. So this morning as we worship, let's just cry out that there's power in the name of Jesus to break these chains. We know he has that ability and we just call on him this morning and we just, we just give him all honor, glory, and praise. So stand with us as we sing Break Every Chain this morning.
sing it's your breath one more time it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour Father, we thank you that you are the creator of the universe. God, that you are the creator of us. You breathe life into us, Jesus. We thank you for that, God. Because we know that through the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus, that is in each and every single one of us, God, we can break chains of bondage. Jesus, we can break chains of addiction, Father through the power of your son, Jesus, who died on the cross, Father. And it didn't just end there, but he rose from the dead three days later, giving us new life, Father, giving us the Holy Spirit. And so, Jesus, we put all our faith, all our trust, all our hope in you this morning, God, because we know that you are within us, Father. We know, God, that you go before us, we know that you are with us. So Jesus, we just honor you this morning, God. We worship you, Father. Lord, we love you. We pray all this in Jesus' name, amen. Today's scripture is from Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 17. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the son of man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. The word of God for the people of God. for sound and for social distances do I have to stay here I'll, I'll do my best well thank you so much for having me back uh, it's always a good it's always my pleasure uh, to be here with you and to worship with you I feel like I get so much more out of being here than I'm able to give um, now before we get started uh, if you are not a grandparent, please stand up. I want you to look at it. Uh, I said, if you are not a grandparent, please stand up. Right? I'd like you to look at everybody else who's seated, and let's give them a big, happy Grandparents Day today. Y'all are the best babysitters there ever was. I mean, y'all, we know sometimes you wish you had had the grandkids first before the kids, but hey, that's not how things work. Uh, we're so thankful for you. Uh, my neighbor, Jack Thompson, used to have a sign on his door. He said, grandkids, welcome. Parents, please stay home. <laughs> you know, happy Grandparents Day. Uh, thank you so much for everything you do. 
and uh, uh, your job's not yet done yet. You know, there's still a lot more that uh, you, you heard what the little young man said, said name one exciting thing that happened this week. I'm sure that young man got to watch a Disney show. I'm sure that young man got to eat candy this week. But to him, the most exciting thing was, I got to see grandma. You mean the world to people. So happy Grandmother's Day. And those who are homeschooling, I know I feel your pain, you know. So, I mean, exactly, you think, okay, exactly what was this first day of class? The little guy is still in the house. You know, and the, and the parent, one parent said, well, if you see me pacing up and down in my backyard talking to myself, don't call the police. I'm having a parent-teacher conference. <coughs> no, well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I'm excited. It's been a good week. The Chiefs won on Thursday night and the Braves won last night. Glory to God. So anyway, things are going well. Thank you so much. We haven't seen each other since the semester began. It's going well at the school. Um, we're having our highest enrollment in more than 30, 35 years. So God is good and, and things are moving in the right direction, even in the midst of a very, very challenging time. Uh, God's blessing us. Uh, still a lot of work to do. Uh, most of you know we've te we tested every student on campus. So the first lot, we only had 30 who were positive, and this, this is because they were positive from their homes. They didn't catch it here, we were trying to screen everyone else. We did another screening last week on Tuesday, and only two uh, were positive out of all the tests that we've done. Things are looking up. Uh, keep wearing those masks and keep encouraging people to wear masks. You do have a few hotheads here or there. Uh, just, just nudge them and encourage them and that it's courtesy and that it's just love, love your neighbor as you love yourself. To the degree that you love yourself and to the degree that you extend certain graces to yourself, that's the same grace you need to extend towards one another. Let's keep social distancing until this community has totally eradicated uh, this scourge. It is a nasty, nasty disease. It's not good uh, and it's real. Uh, and aren't we, I'm so glad everybody's here. So, I've said my little spill. We'll get right into the word of God, word of the Lord. Uh, the scripture was read from Matthew 16, and um, and Jesus is with his disciples, and and there's a lot that has gone on before that, and there's a little bit more that goes on after that. But I wanted to really address this particular passage of scripture because everything we do is found in the person of Jesus Christ. Before there was anything, there was Jesus. Before there was a church, there was Jesus. Before the Bible, and some of you, depending on where you are theologically, before there was a New Testament, there was Jesus. He was at the beginning. He was before all things. Colossians 1.17 says, in him all things consist. He was at the beginning. He was a creator of everything that we see and that we do not see. He is the great I am. He was there. Even though he did not appear in person in the Old Testament, except a few times where theologians called it a Christophany or an epiphany or a prefigurement uh, where he did appear, but he was prophesied and everything in the Old Testament culminated in the person of Jesus Christ. That's why yours and my identity, everything we do today that qualifies us to be called Christians is lodged or embedded in our understanding of who Jesus is. Which brings us to this passage of scripture where Jesus is with his disciples and during that time there's a reason why Jesus had to ask his disciples even though he had called them and they knew very well who had called them because nobody just walks away from his business to follow it and then two weeks later asking do you know who I am you know no they all knew who he was but he really wanted to make sure because some people thought he's just another prophet why based on things they had seen some people thought oh well which prophet is it Jeremiah is it Isaiah which one uh, some people thought well, maybe he's another John or John the Baptist or what and, and people had all kinds of ideas then you had the Pharisees and then you had the Sadducees or the Sadducees and everybody else and all the all the all the and the Romans and all the people who were leading the church at the time who had doubted who he was from the get-go 
And so Jesus had to ask and he wants to make sure that the people who were in his inner circle, the people he had chosen, understood the full import of knowing who he was because in knowing who Jesus is, there is power. In knowing who Jesus is, there is a differentiation between those who do and those who do not. We may all say we are creatures of God. We may all call ourselves children of God, but there are those who choose to respond to God through the person of Jesus Christ, and there are those who choose not to. The death, the birth, death, and, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is probably the most inclusive event in the history of mankind because thereafter, it's the Bible says, whosoever shall come to him, whosoever. It means anyone. You cannot say the same thing about any other religion in this life. You can't. You can't say that about Islam. You can't say that about the Baha'i faith. You can't even say that about Judaism. You cannot even say that about Shintoism or any other religion because there's rules, there's things you have to jump. Christianity just says, whosoever. The Bible in John 1 12 said he came unto his own who was the Jewish people first because he was Jewish and he needed to, to make sure those of his own household were saved but his own did not receive him. Then the Bible says but to as many as received him to them he gave the power to become the children of God or the right or the legislative authority to become the children of of God, the right to uh, take that label, the right to identify themselves as children of God. That's everybody who is sitting in here. Now that we know who we are, the thing is, so what? What is the difference between you and a person who says, I do not follow Jesus? Because there is a difference. Now, the, the, but there's one, the dip, there's this point though. Jesus still loves everybody all the same because for God so loved the world. I mean, he didn't, it doesn't matter who it is. That's why it is the most inclusive event in, the, in world history. So when people try to tell you that Christianity segregates, when people try to tell you, I grew up in Africa and say it was a white man's religion. Well, no, it's not because Jesus actually spent two years in Africa, never spent a day in Europe. Uh, and, and people tell you that. They, you need to tell them this that Jesus died so that we could all have direct access to God the Father, regardless of who you are, to the prostitute caught in the act of adultery. Not innuendo, not secondhand evidence, not something caught in the very act where she deserves death to that person. Jesus reached out and say, where are your accusers? He who is without sin, let him cast the first stone. To a corrupt mafia type of guy, Zacchaeus, he looked him up when he was up in a tree and said, Zacchaeus, I'm not, not only am I going to fellowship with you, but I'm actually going to come to your house for dinner tonight. To a corrupt IRS agent, he calls to become one of his own persons and he says Matthew follow me and ever too much much the chagrin of everybody else and it looks like he's putting together a ragtag team of ruffians mafia people and 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 you know people who are cheating but that's what Jesus was all about he was trying to show us that once you follow him he gives you a new identity so Peter who is probably one of the elders. So in those days, they, the same thing we're going through today was going through in those days. There were two types of rabbinic schools. One was conservative, one was, was liberal. But not in the day, not in the liberal sense of today. So Peter went to a conservative rabbinic school. Paul, who later was, was raised, who later became a Christian, went to a liberal rabbinic school following Gamal. So that's why Paul was able to go out and be inclusive and Peter was so Jewish that he insisted on his own, on just his own, on his own people. I can pack that, I can unpack that some other time. But I'm not using those terms in the, in the way we use those terms today. But Jesus calls the two of them and makes sure everybody's covered, regardless of his weaknesses. In fact, in, in the book of Acts, Peter didn't even want to touch didn't want to touch a Gentile. So when they went to pray for people to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, Peter didn't even want to touch. He didn't want to even get close. And the Bible says, yet while they spoke, the Holy Spirit fell upon them. And God was able to touch them and still accommodate Peter's weakness and petty prejudices. And that's why he then called Paul, who was able to go to the Gentiles, people who were previously not welcome. Because God is an inclusive God. Are you with me? 
So the first, so I, I, and I got, I, I got, I got to move on. So the first thing that that Jesus does is he asks you the question, "Who do you say that I am?" Because as soon as you figure out who Jesus is, and the so what of that question, you've seen the bumper stickers. Jesus is the answer, right? If Jesus is the answer, what is the question? To what question is Jesus the answer? Well, we just love talking about that. You know, what is it that makes him the answer? What is it that makes you and I different to where we can offer something out there in the world that nobody else who, is with, who, who does not have Jesus is not able to offer? What makes you and I different? After, after Peter correctly identifies Jesus, then Jesus turns around and then correctly identifies Peter. So Peter identifies Jesus upon Jesus acknowledging that you've correctly identified me. Now let me go ahead and, uh, and recite your true identity. Let me tell you who you are. So he starts telling Peter, you are this and this and this and this and this. And, and blessed are you, Simon bar Jonah. Was blessed are you, son of Jonah. Right. Then he goes on to say, upon this rock, I'll, you know. and so he starts reciting Peter's identity. And that's the same thing that happens today. If when you, once you know who Jesus is, then you know who you are. Now, in the Bible, there are seven statements where Jesus identifies himself, right? Here we find that uh, Pope, uh, uh, Peter says, you are the Christ, which is a title, not his, not his last name. You know, he, wasn't, he didn't fill out his birth certificate. Jesus, last name Christ. No, it was a title, right? Everybody knows that, right? And so there are seven I am statements that are found in, in the book of John, where, jo where Jesus himself said, I'm the bread of life. I'm the light of the world. I'm the door of the sh to the sheep. I'm the resurrection and the life. I am the good shepherd. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the true vine. Here, we, Jesus gives us a hint on who he is. Once we acknowledge and know who he is, the next question I have is, do you then know who you are? Because remember, here's the, here's the sequence. We are correctly identified Jesus. Jesus then turns around and says, now let me tell you about your true identity. Because one, your true identity is not based on your earthly existence. It's not based on what you can or cannot do. There's something deeply spiritual about how God sees who you are. And if you can tap into that, you'll be able to live a fulfilled life regardless of who you are. Is everybody with me? Everybody with me? So, here are some statements that are found in the Bible. Remember I said Jesus, Peter identifies Jesus, and then Jesus identifies Peter, right? Now, we've correctly identified who Jesus is with the seven I am's. Let's talk about what Jesus says about you. Let's talk about what the Bible says about you. It says, number one, you are made in his image. Hello, somebody. That excites me. In Psalms, it says, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. That's in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, it says, we are his workmanship. In other words, we, we I mean, he, he was so careful in how he made Number three, you are the light of the world. We had to go on and be like, you are the salt of the world. And Peter tells us, you're a chosen race, a, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, or a nation set apart. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are a new creation. You are more than conquerors. You are partakers of his divine nature. You are made righteous. When you take those statements and you look at yourself in the mirror and you recite those things to yourself, you're not being arrogant, but you are reminding yourself of why Jesus died so that he can impart upon you and identity in the same way that he reminded Peter, who from that day onwards was called Peter the Rock. You all with me? So, many, why is this so important? Because, as somebody once said, the wealthiest place on the planet Earth is not, deep, is not deep down in a gold mine, it's not in Kimberley, South Africa, in the diamond mines, it's in a graveyard. And I said, why? He said, because there many have gone to sleep with unfulfilled dreams. Many have gone to sleep with inventions that did not come to fruition. Many have gone to sleep with ideas that could have alleviated human suffering, but it never came to be. Many have gone to sleep with vaccines that could have cured cancer or AIDS, but it never was because many of those had been born originals, but because of things that happened in this life, they died poor, cheap copies, and they took the wealth that God had invested with them to the grave. So how do we unlock that? Well,
many of us today. We, we, we come into this world and the first culture we encounter is our family. So our family has traditions. We go culture, this is what we do, this is what we're doing. And then whatever country we are born in, it has a culture, right? And then when we become Christians, we assume and we join dots that should not be connected and assume the Christian walk and the Christian life should be defined within the terms of our culture. When really when we come to Jesus, it's a reset. It's not me, bro. I kid you not. I kid you not. It's not me. Uh, when, 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 you know, when God wants us to reset a button that cancels every lack and every shortfall because none of us are perfect parents, every shortfall that we imparted to our kids that, and, and cancels every shortfall that the American culture has imparted on you because not everything about the American culture leads anybody to Jesus or reveals who Jesus is. But most of us have fallen into this trap because we are blessed. Because, you know, none of us are living under a bridge. And, and on average, America does better than the other. So we just assume that must mean that somehow God is endorsing or accrediting everything we do. Therefore, we're a Christian nation. That, there's a Greek word for something like that. And it's baloney. <laughs> we have to reset the button where we break our hearts before him and then he tells us what our identity is. I mentioned this the last time I was here. I said my concern and my heart breaks for America because right now most Christians are getting their identity and their cues from politicians as they wrangle, as they call each other names. Some of the nastiest things about, oh, this one is this, this one is this, this one, and I'm sitting, on, I'm sick and tired. Of, and I say this the last time, it's not about the elephant or the donkey, it's about the Lamb of God. Get your cues from the Lamb of God, not from the donkey or the elephant. Once you get your identity and your cues, inform the elephant, inform the donkey. Let their strategies and their answers for this world and their agenda come from the agenda of the Lamb, not the other way around. Amen. Somebody spiked my grits this morning. Regardless, I'm still happy to, to live in this country. On my worst day, I'd still rather be here. So let me say this about identity. Three things. Number one, our true identities are, reveal, are revealed through the revelation and manifestation of the Son of Man in our lives. Who do you say that I am? Peter correctly identified that. And then Jesus correctly identified Peter. And thereafter, Peter fulfilled his, his destiny. Number two. Our true identities are actualized when we walk in the truth and light of Jesus Christ, not worldly ideas. And I'll unpack that in a little bit. Number three, our true identities are not based on our successes, accomplishments, or our failures, but are based on who Christ is. Let's go back to number one. I said our true identities are revealed through the revelation, manifestation of the Son of God. The revelation and the manifestation of the Son of God. Now, remember this. Peter had issues. He just had issues. The story of the prodigal is an allegory. It talks about somebody who's walked away from Christ, one, but it's also a story about what was happening and the wrangling that was happening amongst Jesus' inner group. Where they were, I like one of the old Jesus movies where those who were very Jewish were looking at, 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 at Levi, at Matthew, and the others, and looking at them and saying, You evil people, how is it that you're part of us? So then Jesus tells the prodigal story of the prodigal son, and he's looking at who were mafia type, who were thieves, who were cheating people, and he's talking about them having left, and now that they're home, you, need to, you ought to celebrate them because God definitely is celebrating them. That's why I say it's an allegory. Then it also speaks to us, the greater body, right? So the same Peter winded up being the one who, in his weakness, denied Jesus. You remember that? I said, Peter, 
uh, Peter under fire, right? And then I said during the night when they were on fire and he denied Jesus again, Peter, Peter at the fire. Then on the day of Pentecost, after he receives the Holy Spirit, Peter on fire, he's the one that gets up. He's not afraid anymore. He comes out of hiding and says, this is not, the, these men are not drunk, but this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. And he gives a wonderful sermon, wonderful exegesis upon which today most churches are built on. The same Peter. Why? He was able to find his destiny that he stayed on with Christ that by the time he was being persecuted and was going to be martyred he did not want to be martyred straight up he said if you're going to kill me on a cross kill me upside down because I am not Jesus and there's something about that man that's the same Peter he got his identity he was no longer a fisherman who was narrow-minded God changed his life earlier before that conversation Jesus had warned them and said, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. And the, and the allegory there is, the leaven is the thinking of the Pharisees. Beware of the thinking of the hypocrites. Beware of the doctrine of the Pharisees. Beware of these ideas creeping into the church that are coming from those who are not of the church and that are influencing how we feel against each other. You're Democrat, you're Republican, so you don't come to my Thanksgiving party. You're, guess who's not coming to my barbecue? Every Democrat or every Republican. That's nonsense. Why? Because we've allowed the leaven of the Pharisees to come in our midst. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Keep that out. And let's chart a new course on how we relate to one another. So when two politicians walk in there, they ought to be ashamed of themselves to the point that they will come and kneel down and repent for how they feel and the things they spew against one another and try to divide us. Number two, our true identities are actualized when we walk in the truth and the light of Jesus. When you walk in the light of Jesus, you will know your true identity. Now, many, many years ago when I was a kid, there was a movie, right? It was a comedy. It was called See No Evil, Hear No Evil. Remember that story? Remember some of you who are older? Richard Pryor was the, the, the African-American guy and he was, he was blind, right? You remember that movie? Okay, so anyway, you know, some of you don't remember that movie, right? And, and, and so, so his, his character was, he was this black, blind guy, and he had a white partner, and they were always up to no good, right? And one day, there's a scene where the guy says to him, and refers to him as black. Well, he's blind, he's never seen himself, so he throws a fit. He goes, you mean I'm black? You mean I'm black? What are you saying? What does that mean? Right? And we laughed so much, but I want you to think about that. He's lived in darkness all this time. How will you know what he looks like? He didn't even know there was a difference. Until somebody said there was a difference. When you're in the dark, no, you don't know your identity. We don't know your identity. We can hear your voice. We might think, okay, well, it's a female that's speaking. But what else? What dress are they wearing? What do you know? Are they dark? Are they light? We don't know. Because that's what darkness does. And the stuff we allow to come from the world brings a cloud of darkness upon us and it robs us of our true identities to where you and I don't even know what it is that God has called us to do because we're following the philosophies of and the worldly ideas that's being spewed upon the church. That's why the first thing God had to attend to, he says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, but the earth was without form and void. And what? And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God started to move upon the face of the waters. And God said, the first thing he said, he said, let there be light. Because he knew the moment there is light, there is, people can discern morphology. People can discern shape. People can discern color. People can discern those things. People can issue identity because now you can see. That's why later on, when he's created man, they can start naming all the animals. Because you can see them and so you can issue an identity. That's why it's important to walk in the light of Christ, not of worldly ideas. Number three. Our true identities are not based on our successes, accomplishments, or failures. Because we have a tendency to stereotype or to categorize people based on what they're able to do or what they can offer or their successes. And if a rich man walks in here, we give him the best seat. Baloney! 
You know, you know the word in the New Testament for Satan? In the Greek is the word kategoreo, which means to categorize. Anytime you try to categorize somebody based on what it is you see in the natural, you are operating in the spirit of Satan. Sorry, I'm looking for an amen somewhere. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Couldn't find one. Moving right along. It doesn't matter what you've done. It's all about Jesus. So, uh, go back to the previous slide so I can show you a picture I took from my office, right? One of the greatest theologians in the 18, in, in the 1800s. So remember, the Reformation was four, five hundred years ago, and that's why we're here today because it's a result of the Reformation. And then there were German theologians that came after, helped explain Christianity to us, right? One of the greatest, greatest theologians of the 1800s. His name was Frederick Sklarmacher, Sklar, Sklar right? No, one, keep going, keep going, right? And and he was an old man. We go to the 19th century. The greatest, the greatest, greatest theologian in the 19th century was that slide, that slide, was Karl Barth. Now, this is a picture in my office, and this, all these, you see where it says Barth? That's one book. That's one book called Church Dogmatics. One book. It's got all these volumes. Just one book. Now, he wrote many of those, right? So I want you to compare these two people. You got Frederick who was in the 18th century, got Karl Barth. Here, here is how they responded. One day, Frederick, he was an old man, and having accomplished all these, his long beard, he was sitting by a bench, and a police officer came and thought he was a vagrant and asked him, sir, who are you? And Frederick looked at the police officer and said, I wish I knew. <laughs> after everything, after being a great philosopher, he was, a, he was getting old and he was empty, devoid, because he did not anchor everything he did in the person of Jesus Christ. Karl Barth, last century, he is in China. And these Chinese Christians who have escaped, you know, and they talk to him and they say, Dr. Barth, Dr. Barth, you've written these books, you've written these books, you've written these books. So what conclusion have you come to? So what about these books? And Karl Barth said these words, I'm glad you asked me. I'll tell you conclusion I've come to. Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. It's become a song since then. Why? He said, everything I have done, Everything I've ever accomplished in this life, here is what it comes down to. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. You can give me degrees and PhDs and you can give me accolades, but it all comes down to this. Because I found my identity. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Three questions, then I'll pray. Jesus knew who he was and knew what he was going to do. In Luke 4:18, Jesus arrives in the temple and says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to, he to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of the blind, and to set at liberty those who were oppressed. Jesus knew who he was and hence lived it out. Because of knowing your identity, do you know what your mission in life is? Do you live a spirit-empowered and spirit-enhanced life? Are you thinking only three years of his earthly life? And all those years he lived, he was in preparation. I gave you a story about Hillsong. We sang some of Hillsong songs today. I told you this, back in the late 90s, my wife and I got to meet, you know, and we, we worked a little bit in Australia. And I told you this, that Brian Houston's dad was 55 years old when he left Christ Church, New Zealand, to start a, to plant a new church in Australia. And it was nothing. And everybody said, you ought to be thinking about retiring. And he left, forgot about retiring, went and planted a church. And now Hillsong became one of the most influential churches in the world. It was never too late. Second thing, Jesus said, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. He also says this, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Question, because of knowing your identity, can you articulate your purpose with authority and conviction? Last, 
Jesus said this, no one, is, no one can take my life away from me, but I choose to lay down on my own initiative. I have authority to lay down. I have authority to take it up. This commandment I have received for my life. Question. By knowing your identity, what cause are you sold out to? What mountain are you prepared to die? When you say, on this mountain, I shall not change. I will not compromise. I am prepared to die on this mountain. There's an old hymn we used to sing. Say, Once in every man and nation comes the moment to decide. There is a moment that comes to each one of us where you make a decision and say, upon this mountain, I will die. What is that mountain? Let me bless you with prayer. Then I'll get to my seat. Father, we're just so thankful for the gift of life. Just so thankful for everything you do for us. Thankful for the privilege to worship and to gather as your children today. Thankful for this church and every person under the sound of my voice. We are here, Father. We've gathered. You've blessed us with health and you've taken care of our needs. I now ask, Father, as we continue to go from here, that we fully comprehend who you are and who the Son of Man is in our lives. So that in whatever time given us we're able to fulfill our calling and make us realize it's not too late it's not too early but the time is now to start making a difference in Jesus name amen thank you This is our communion time, um, and there was a part of um, the message today that reminded me um, of an exercise that I do um, quite often um, in therapy. And I'm not here to counsel you all today, don't worry. This isn't gonna be a joint therapy session. Um, uh, but uh, it's an exercise where we, um, for those who are um, struggling um, with their own identity, with, with knowing their worth, um, and, um, and we make I am statements, um, you know, like we make, um, we come up with statements that they, um, that might sound like I am brave, you know, like I am, um, creative, I am worthy. Um, and we do that very purposely, right? Like we add those just two very little words on the beginning that says I am and um, and in those two world two words is a powerful presence because it speaks to uh, it speaks to um, uh, our identity right like these undeniable truths about ourselves um, so um, and it, through the love and sacrifice of Jesus Christ we know these certain truths um, uh, about ourselves as well. Um, and so, um, in, in our communion time, may we join with um, the Holy Spirit um, and Jesus Christ um, in that absolute love um, to know, um, to know, and embrace our own truths that I am a child of God and I am loved, um, uh, whosoever. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here 
Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray. Dear Lord, I believe you are present today. We love you, Lord, above all things, and we thank you for all things. As we reflect on all that you have give, done for us, and as we partake of these symbols at this communion table, we humbly take this bread and eat it in remembrance of you. For your own body was broken for us, and in remembrance, Lord, we drink this cup, which represents the blood you shed on that cross for all of our many sins. Amen.
and this is our typically our offering time. Um, so um, as I was thinking about what I wanted to say um, for this part of the service, um, for whatever reason, um, probably the Holy Spirit, um, uh, an image, um, a memory, an image popped up of the very first Bible I ever got that my mom and dad got me, um, and it was this little. It's probably like this big. Just little um, Precious Moments Bible. Did anyone ever have one? Like a Precious Moments Bible? Yeah. Um, and um, it had my name engraved on the front. And one of the first pages, they would have like the little pages with a Precious Moments picture and a little um, kind of scripture. And one of the first pages um, uh, said, God loves a cheerful giver. Um, and um, today, as I was listening through, or listening, um, as the joys and concerns were shared, um, it just was impressed on me, um, just the, the giving and all the ways um, that you all are giving right now, um, um, giving of your money, giving of your time, giving of your skills and talents, um, uh, and, and probably um, a million um, different ways that I'm not thinking of. Um, and um, and doing it with for um, doing it with the heart of Jesus, with a cheerful and joyful, um, loving heart. Um, and isn't that how we give give back to the Lord? Um, and I'm so grateful myself for that today. Um, so I just pray we continue in that spirit of joyful giving this morning. Father in heaven, we thank you today for your blessings that you have bestowed upon us. I pray for our congregation today, Lord. May we all give with gladness and sincerity. In Jesus' name, amen. It's my privilege to be able to offer you an invitation this morning. An invitation that could change your life. I'd like to invite you to know your identity. If you've been in the darkness and don't know your identity and want to walk into the light and truly know your identity, your spiritual identity, we invite you to come forward this morning to do that. If you'd like to continue to learn about your identity, perhaps you've, you've already learned or, or discovered your identity with another church and want to transfer your membership to our church and continue that path with this body of believers, we invite you to do that as well as we sing our, our song of invitation this morning. Time for the benediction, so we'll end with this. Go forward this week knowing your identity. Let's do the announcements first. <laughs> there are some right here. Okay, on the 15th at 6.30, we have worship music practice. On the 16th from 6.30 to 8, we have disciples care group. Um, quick correction on that. So we have a little change in schedule um, this week. Um, so we will not, Disciples Care Group will not be meeting this week. Okay, scratch that one. No Disciples Care Group this week. On the 17th, AST meeting at 7 o'clock. 5 o'clock on the 18th, it's Friday Friendship Feast. They're going to distribute those meals at the door, it says. On the 22nd, 
we're going to have a training to become a greeter. So if you're interested in becoming a greeter uh, during Sunday mornings, we'll have trainings to do that. Are there any other announcements? Yes, today's our first Sunday for our um, Kids 412 group. Yes. Um, so um, they're right after church today. Um, there'll be lunch. Um, there'll be um, games for the kiddos to play um, and music and songs that like they'll be doing together. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, like seriously. So um, how, like um, if you have kiddos, um, you are welcome to stay. Like we said, parents, if you want to stay, you are welcome. If you want to um, have your kiddos stay and you have other things to do during um, that time, um, that's okay too. They um, are going to be in the best of hands. So um, please stay for that. It's going to, um, and just, uh, I think it's one way um, that the Lord is, uh, Holy Spirit is moving in our church. Um, and it's just going to um, just transform um, uh, not only in the lives of our kiddos, but I think that that is just going to um, bless us um, and bless our hearts as a congregation as well. So stay for that today after church. I also want to thank Dr. Reggie for being here this morning for, and for delivering the sermon. And new church directories available in the narthex. Thank you, Dialene, for putting those together. Any other announcements? I have something. Oh, one there, more. There have been people that have asked when the drawing for the quilts are going to be. Do you oh, know? that's the last Sunday of the month. Last Sunday last of the month. Last Sunday of the month we're going to draw for the quilts. So you still have a little bit of time to buy your raffle tickets. Good, good question. Yeah. You're going to dedicate the bricks the same Sunday. It's a big Sunday. Yes. Okay. Are we ready for the benediction now? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Go forward with your identity, your spiritual identity, and show your identity to others so that they will know who you are. Be safe until we come back again together next Sunday. And God's people said? Amen. 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 Let's go ahead and stand. We're going to sing I Exalt Thee a couple times through. I exalt thee, I exalt thee, I exalt thee, O oh Lord, I Have a great week. Go in peace.